Dirty Dealings, Corporate Battles, Consumer Wars. This is Evening 5. Bursa Malaysia ended the week mixed with buying in selected heavyweights and commodity-related stocks amid the negative sentiment in regional markets. At 5pm, the FBM KLCI rose 0.18% to 1,547.57. The market breadth was negative, with decliners thumping gainers 918 to 289. While 416 counters were unchanged, 753 untraded and 23 others suspended. Turnover stood at 4.71 billion units with 3.4 billion ringgit. Rokuten Trade Equity Research Vice President Tong Pak Leng said the key regional indices finished lower following the rise in commodity prices due to concerns over worsening geopolitical conditions in the Middle East. Israel had launched an attack on Iranian soil, Reuters reported, in the latest tit for tat exchange between the two arch foes. Additionally, hawkish statements from US Federal Reserve officials added pressure to risk appetite. Tong said on the domestic front, Rakuten trade strongly advises investors to exercise caution in light of increasing market risks, elevated volatility in global markets and escalating geopolitical tensions. The research house anticipates the benchmark index to further consolidate until new catalysts emerge. Regionally, Japan's Nikkei 225 sank 2.66% to 37,068.35. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index slipped 0.99% to 16,224.14. South Korea's Kospi shed 1.63% to 2,591.86. Singapore's Straits Times Index eased 0.35% to 3,176.51. And China's SSE Composite Index dipped 0.2%. 9% to 3,065.26. Separately, Bati Air will be suspending its operations to Istanbul, Turkey, effective May 1, 2024. The airline's operator Malindo Airways said this is in response to the situation in the Middle East, which has significantly impacted its routes, leading to operational restrictions that make it challenging to continue flights to the region. Malaysia's economy is estimated to have grown by 3.9% in the first quarter of 2024 from a year earlier, compared with the 3.0% annual growth booked in the previous quarter, led by growth in the services sector. According to the Department of Statistics Malaysia's advanced estimates, all main sectors experienced positive growth, with the services sector reporting a 4.4% increase year-on-year. Year. Chief Statistician Datuk Sri Dr. Muhammad Uzir Mahidin said growth in this sector was supported by the wholesale and retail trade, transport and storage and business services subsectors. The manufacturing sector rebounded to 1.9% in this quarter, after contracting by 0.3% in the fourth quarter of 2023. The mining and quarrying sector expanded by 4.9%, while the agriculture sector rose to 1.3% from the year prior. Meanwhile, the construction sector showed substantial growth at 9.8%, as compared to 3.6% in the previous quarter. Separately, data released by the Investment, Trade and Industry Ministry shows the exports totaled 128.64 billion ringgit in March, down 0.8% from 129.67 billion ringgit a year earlier. Bagnagara expects the Malaysian economy to grow between 4% and 5% for the full year of 2024. Analysts say the planned merger of Axiata Group with India's Bharti Airtel raises concerns as the latter subsidiary Airtel Lanka is currently a loss-making company. TA Securities noted that Airtel Lanka recorded a net loss of around 245.4 million ringgit for its financial year 2023. And should its earnings performance fall short of expectations, dialogue would be subject to earnings volatility. Yesterday, Axiata's Sri Lankan subsidiary Dialogue entered into a definitive agreement to acquire Airtel Lanka, with a deal to be satisfied via the issuance of 952.7 million or 10.355% of new Dialogue shares to Bharti Airtel.
Meanwhile, Kenang Research said upon completion of the merger, Axiata's FY 2024 net debt to EBITDA will increase slightly to 2.36 times from 2.23 times and noted an earnings drag from Airtel Lanka may not persist for long, as dialogue may narrow Airtel Lanka's EBITDA through costs savings from an integrated network, sales and marketing channels and other administrative expenses. Maybank Investments Bank Research, meanwhile, views the merger as an overall healthy market development while generating longer-term synergies. Still, there are integrated costs to be borne, it noted, which could defer Axiata's net profit recovery in the initial years. On the whole, there are 10 buy recommendations, 10 hold ratings and 5 sell calls on the stock, with an average 12-month target price of 2 ringgit 75 sen. Axiata settled unchanged today at 2 ringgit 55. Shares of Awanbiru Technology or Awan Tech fell as much as 53% today, prompting Bursa Malaysia to suspend intraday short selling or IDSS activities for the counter. Awan Tech's share price tumbled to a low of 15 sen during the morning session, its lowest since March 2020. The stock paired losses to close at 22 sen, still down 31.3%. At 22 sen, the software services firm is worth 173.8 million ringgit. Awantech's IDSS will resume on Monday at 8.30 a.m. The sell-off comes after the company announced yesterday that trading in its shares will be suspended from April 26, after it failed to submit its regularization plan on time. Previously known as Presta Riang, Awantech was classified as an affected listed issuer in January 2021. Due to the termination of its unit, Presta Riang Systems membership in the Microsoft Partner Network. Earlier this month, Awantech disclosed its application for a waiver from the obligation to submit a regularization plan, citing notable improvements in its financial performance. Simultaneously, it sought reclassification to alleviate its affected issuer status, as well as a six-month extension until October 13th to submit its regularization plan in case the waiver and reclassification applications are unsuccessful. In a board's filing today, Awantech said, Bursa Securities' decision on its waiver and upliftment is still pending. It plans to appeal against its trading suspension. MKH Oil Palm East Kalimantan saw its initial public offering oversubscribed by 8.43 times, ahead of its listing on the main market of Bursa Malaysia on April 30th. The 51.2 million IPO shares made available for the Malaysian public received a total of 9,510 applications for 482.88 million issued shares, valued at 299.39 million ringgit, representing an overall subscription rate of 8.43 times. For the Bumiputra portion, a total of 4,628 applications for 220.24 million shares were received, which represents an oversubscription rate of 7.6 times. For the public portion, a total of 4,882 applications for 262.64 million shares were received, which represents an oversubscription rate of 9.26 times. Meanwhile, the joint placement agents have confirmed that the 168.79 million issue shares and 30.7 million offer shares made available by way of private placement to selected investors have been fully placed out. MKH Oil Palm, the plantation arm of property developer MKH, aims to raise up to 155.43 million ringgit from its listing. Based on the IPO price of 62 sen apiece, the group will have a market capitalization of 634.6 million ringgit.